Hello, I'm Matt Harris and you're watching Buckingham News, our top stories. The University of Buckingham officially welcomed the new students with a matriculation ceremony last Monday. A second vape shop opened in town, leaving locals wondering if vaping really is a healthier alternative to smoking. And local organisations are looking to secure more funding through the council's grant scheme. On Friday the 13th of October, a new Vape Direct store was opened in the Buckingham High Street. It is the second Vape store in Buckingham after Kai Michaels. Suki Sagu has more on the story. This is Vape Direct, the second Vape store to open in Buckingham. It's welcome the question, how safe is vaping in comparison to smoking? Vaping has become a new trend, with 2.9 million adults in Great Britain currently using an e-cigarette. A report from the NHS has shown that vaping is definitely healthier than smoking, due to the lower levels of chemicals involved. Smoking is now like a bit more of a social taboo, um, especially with the not being able to smoke in pubs and restaurants or indoors. So it's kind of, there's a way that it's kind of more convenient for people to vape. With the advantages that vaping brings, it's clear to see that the cigarette industry is taking a hit. I think people are really just starting to see the health benefits to it. Um, the publicity for it is nowhere near as high as smoking. A lot of people just don't think it's as cool as smoking. Vaping has become more and more popular in both urban and rural areas, leaving us to see the risks involved with smoking and the long-term effects of vaping. This is Suki Sagu for Buckingham News. Buckingham Town Council have given grant assistance to local organisations for years through annual applications as well as ongoing grants. With the deadline coming up, Kezia Fentiman reports. Buckingham Town Council supports several organisations in the town with grants that help provide facilities and services benefiting the town residents. And applications are now open for the financial year 2018 and 19. One of the many local organisations already benefiting from the grants is the Buckingham Old Jail here in the heart of the town. It receives ongoing grants of around £3,000 a year. We do need a bit of support locally um, and we have quite a few people coming around the museum. We're all quite pleased that the Town Council does give us a grant towards the upkeep of the Old Jail. And very often we have uh, exhibitions actually down in the, in the exercise yard which bring extra in. Other successful applicants from last year include St Peter and St Paul Church and the Buckingham Literary Festival. In the tax year of 2016 and 17, the council opened the Lace Hill Sports and Community Centre and staged lots of community events. The town council spend around 12% of the annual budget on community events and 45% on green spaces. The deadline for new grant applications is Friday the 17th of November with successful organisations receiving the grant in May 2018. This is Kezia Fentiman for Buckingham News. Obesity is an increasingly common problem around the world. However, in the UK, it is rapidly growing among children and teens over the last four decades. Lexi Grishner finds out more on this. The Lancet analysis released on World Obesity Day on October the 11th warns that more people than ever are at risk of developing health problems such as diabetes, heart disease, early stroke, and even certain types of cancer. I would say that obesity itself is not just the problem, it's all the diseases that it goes on to cause. So diabetes is the main one, uh, cardiovascular disease is the next, certain sorts of cancers, and that's not to mention sort of uh, stigmatisation, self-esteem issues. So it's a huge problem that has an enormous cost uh, in the health service. And I think in 2012, obesity-related uh, costs in the NHS was about £10 billion. Uh, what are they trying to do? Well, they're trying to do education. They're trying to put tax on s sweet drinks, which I saw in the paper yesterday, showed that there was a reduction of about 10% in that. But that will probably take five or ten years before we even know that that's had an effect on obesity. For many people, modern life involves eating excessive amounts of cheap, high-calorie food and spending a lot of time being inactive when they should be focusing on a combination of doing the right amount of exercise and eating healthier in smaller quantities. If more caution is taken into what children and teens eat, 
along with physical activity, then it's likely that obesity rates may be reduced in the future. This is Lexi Grisner reporting for Buckingham News. And now over to sport with Mariam Najoy. Looking to extend their streak of unbeaten home games, the Milton Keynes Lightning hosted the Coventry Blaze at Planet Ice MK on Saturday. Philip Johnson has more. Last Saturday evening saw the Coventry Blaze engage the Milton Keynes Lightning in a Challenge Cup matchup. Several goals were scored during the game, with the first coming early in the first period by Lightning forward Quinn Pompey. Minutes later, a penalty shot was awarded to the Blaze, which was easily deflected by netminder Mika Vickman. Looking to secure an early lead, Ben Foster scored an unassisted goal to bring the score to 2-0. This by all accounts led to a violent turn in the game. This began with a fight between the University of Buckingham sponsored Matt Nickerson and Blazers Danique Paquette, with both players receiving a two-minute penalty. A brief pause in the aggression during the second period allowed Paul Phillips to score Lightning's third goal, but this was soon overshadowed by a questionable check on Lewis Hook that Matt Nickerson took personally, swooping in to defend his teammate's honour. It was clear that Nickerson was out for blood, as a third fight merely five minutes later earned him a game ban. After losing a core defender due to fighting, Blaze were able to extract a goal from the Lightning. But in response, the Lightning scored a further two goals to bring the score at full time to Milton Keynes Lightning 5, Coventry Blaze 1. This is Philip Johnson for Buckingham News. The FIFA World Cup has a long history of showcasing the best of national teams worldwide, while also showcasing which nations are in up to scratch. After England's group stage exit in 2014 and their qualification for the 2018 tournament, we asked the people of Buckingham how they thought their nation would perform. Jordan Galloway has more. Ever since it began, the World Cup has been the front of the minds of many. Great moments of controversy and sadness, as well as great moments of national pride have graced our TV screens and made football much more than just a game. We went out into Buckingham Town to find out what the public thought of England's chances at the 2018 World Cup. This chap that used to play for Milton Keynes, Deli Alley, he's a good youngster and they've got several of those coming along but they've got to try and harness them somehow, you know, with some sort of leaders in the team. In the past, there's always been some older, better players in the team to bring them along, but... I think, well, I think we've got much of a team at all, to be perfectly honest with you. Yeah, we big them up every time. If they get to the semi-finals, I'll be happy, and um, they'll probably go on penalties. Uh, no chance, <laughs> basically, because, uh, well, every game they've played recently, they're just rubbish. Well, hopefully. You know, whether we'll ever get back to the 1966 effort, that's... You know, they just don't seem to have got the players anymore. So there you have it. Buckingham Town doesn't seem to have much faith in our great nation. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we're out of the running yet. Many hopefuls are dreaming of the glory days once to turn into England. This reporter most definitely is. The University of Buckingham men's basketball team took on MK Wolves last Sunday in the opening game of the season. Sophia Rook was caught side to see how events unfolded. The University of Buckingham men's basketball team commenced their first game of the season in stellar form against the MK Wolves, who seemed stunned from the off by the opposition's evident skill set. As the first quarter ticked on, Buckingham commandeered the court, setting a rapid pace and leaving a trail of destruction in their wake, of which the Wolves proved unsuccessful in amending right up to the final whistle. Likewise, newcomers to the team did not disappoint, players moved as a unit and performance was strong. Chris Armour dazzled onlookers in the final quarter, shooting numerous goals from the halfway line, the ball barely touching the sides. As the points continued to climb, only interrupted by the Wolves' sparse attempts to counter. Um, uh, we had great performances from Perez, uh, Adam and myself also led the team. So. Just as Buckingham were appearing almost invincible, disaster struck with number 8 taking a nasty fall that saw him requesting a substitution. But as quick as Olasawa hit the floor, the team flew straight back on full form, powering ahead to clinch the final basket with seconds to spare. It was our first game that lots of newcomers, and I'm just glad that we were able to recover. We were able to focus. We ran.
find our place. We had to watch the team camaraderie. I'm just glad we were able to come out with the win. We still have a long season to go, lots of many fights, to, lots of many battles to face. But I'm just glad we did so well. We're ready to move on to the next game. Morale was high with both teams playing a commendable match. Buckingham head towards their next game against the MK Knights with a win under their belt and a positive start to the season, setting the tone for future games. This is Sophia Rook for Buckingham News. And now back to the studio. Last Wednesday, the University of Buckingham hosted its second Poetry Night of the Year. The evening features performances of poetry, music and literature by students. Jack Wilson was there. The University opened the doors of the Radcliffe Centre on Wednesday to introduce students to the literary and musical arts that are present across the globe and embedded within many cultures. celebration of poems and music from all over the world, embracing the diversity of languages in Buckingham. The university is a, a very multicultural place as it is and as we are the multicultural society, I thought it was a, it's a great platform for students to show their culture. So it was lovely, great turnout, uh, the crowd was amazing. I think it was a great evening, we had a lot of turnout from staff and students and I think it was a wonderful presentation of the diversity of languages that we have at Buckingham. The event seeks to bring more of these arts and languages to the university and hopefully more celebrate the diversity here in Buckingham. This is Jack Wilson for Buckingham News. Gabriel Stein, owner of the macroeconomic research consultancy Stein Brothers, gave a lecture about the challenges for the central banks last Wednesday at the university. Stein has written and commented extensively on the problems of monetary unions, credit flows, demographics and pension issues, and other business related to money. Alice Masiamani has the story. Gabriel Stein graduated from the Stockholm School of Economics in 1980. He then moved to London to start his own company, Stein Brothers. In the lecture, he discussed the role of central banks and the problems they have. Back in 2006, I wrote a, uh, what we call the monthly review for Lombard Street Research clients, where I said that central bankers, they are now on top of the world, and when you're on top of the world, there's only one way to go, and that's down. It's a crucial difference with 2006, which is that we know that they are not omnipotent. We don't believe that they can do everything anymore. Stein is also a special advisor to Oxford Economics and Chief Economic Advisor to the Official Monetary and Financial Institutions Forum. Central banks face three issues right now. There is what, what they have to do, or feel that they have to do, which is normalize monetary policy. And here, uh, there are two rules. Rule number one, there will be another financial crisis at some stage. And rule number two is central banks can't stop it from happening. We have seen a massive change in how central banks operate, the introduction of uh, unconventional measures. And this is fascinating for someone who observes uh, the economy. The talk was a big success with many interested that showed up and many questions that were answered after the lecture. This is Alicia Massimiani from Buckingham News. As students settle into the new term, the University of Buckingham has held its second matriculation ceremony. Ben Collins tells us more. On this day, all departments come together for this formal occasion. Our matriculation ceremony is the official introduction and admission of all new students. Vice-Chancellor Anthony Sheldon introduces the event and welcomes everyone. Names of students are called out and individually greeted by heads of each department and senior management. In addition to this, the Student Union President and our executives also gave insight into how they run the University and the Student Union. We caught up with some matriculated students to see how they found the ceremony. Yeah, I thought the teachers were up from anywhere else I've been, they're far more interactive with you and that makes it so much better. So yeah, I love it. Yeah. Uh, it was very lovely. I, uh, I do feel very welcomed. I, I can't wait to experience everything. Some interesting feedback from some of the attendees. We sure hope they do enjoy the next two years here at Buckingham. And who knows, perhaps one of them might be up on stage welcoming another group of students in the future. This is Ben Collins for Buckingham News. As a renowned event in the social calendar, National Crow Week is widely celebrated across the UK in October each year. 
to raise money for malnourishment and poverty-focused charities. This week, Noli Dismaniso makes us a delicious curry from scratch. With a variety of curries, today we'll be making a basic chicken curry from scratch. To make our curry, we will need one large onion, finely chopped, two peeled cloves of garlic, three whole chilies, garam masala, turmeric powder, curry powder, some rice, vegetable oil and chilli salt to taste. Start by pouring some vegetable oil into a pan. Add the diced onion and sauté until translucent. We can now add 2 tablespoons of garam masala and 2 teaspoons of turmeric powder. It is vital to allow the spices to cook in the oil in order to intensify the flavour. Now add the garlic and chilli. Season your meat of choice with some curry and salt, in this case it's chicken, and add into the spices. Stir until the chicken is cooked through. In the meantime, we can start cooking our rice. One cup of rice to two parts water. Ensure to check on your chicken. Add some water and allow to simmer until the sauce is nice and thick. Serve the curry with some rice and don't forget to have some delicious warm butter naan bread to go with it. What about attempt at a curry? Friends and family can all dig in and enjoy. This is Noli Giswamisa for Parking Animals. Thank you for watching Buckingham News. We'll see you next week.